Hey everybody. Okay, so we have a super cool project today. We are going to make some amazing things with pot holders. I got them from Dollar General or Dollar Tree or Walmart. Most of them are only a dollar a piece. Um, and stay tuned for the last one. Don't click away on that last one because it's super kitschy and super cute and I think you're going to like it. Anyways, thanks for watching. And oh, hey, I'm Colette by the way with Blessing Script Therapy. And if you didn't know, and if you did, thanks so much for coming back. All right, let's go to the project. All right, so I got these towels at Dollar General. They were a buck. Look at how cute. Now, and I also have this pot holder. Now, if you have it folded the way it's naturally folded, the way Dollar General folds it, then see how my pot holder, it kind of overhangs a little bit. So for me, I didn't want that overhang. So see how I put my pot holder on and it covers the entirety of the width of that towel? That's what I wanted. If you'd like it the other way, that's fine. Now flip it over. Put your pot holder on top with the design facing up, and then we're going to sew it down the middle. You can, it, you know, put some pins on to make sure that it's all in place, um, whatever. And then once you've sewn it, you want to clip your edges so that you don't have any strings hanging. And then look. Oh, um, I then take some buttons that I got from Dollar Tree and pick out one that I think will look good. Make sure that your button actually fits in that little loop, though, because if it doesn't, you're, yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> so then I'm going to just sew. This is the hardest part of this whole thing is sewing the button on to the powder. And to be clear, that's not very hard either. So see how I just knotted my piece of thread? And I know, friends, I always put too much thread <laughs> always to I do too much thread so there's like four miles of it but I'm always afraid I'm going to do too little and I will run out I don't know maybe it's just me but you notice how I'm doing this and I'm only going through the top layers I'm not going through the bottom and so we just sew the button um I don't I'm not good at sewing buttons I'm not gonna lie this is a hot mess express um but you can't see it so in all fairness it's okay so don't get freaked out about it. Don't make it like it's a big deal to sew a button. Nobody's going to see the back of the button. It's fine. So just do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, and all I'm doing, see, I'm just putting it through the fabric on the bottom and then I lace it up through the holes. I do that several times just because this is going to be taking some stress because we're going to attach it to our um, oven door. And so it's going to be getting some stress, right? It's going to be pulled down a little bit. And you just want to make sure that it's really on there. Then once you do as many times as you want to um, go through the buttonholes, then all I'm doing now is just knotting around the um, the initial... God, words are hard. I'm so sorry. <laughs> all I'm doing is knotting it. And it's going around all of those um, threads that we did earlier. And now I'm just putting it through, knotting it one more time. I have a tendency to be over overboard when it comes to knotting. I don't know why. It's like I never know how many is enough. <laughs> but this end part, I'm just knotting the end and then I'm cutting off the, um, the excess thread. And then that's it. Friends, I mean, stop. It was that easy. Come and look at how cute this is. And then you just loop that in there and you've got a hanging towel. You could do a whole set. These were a dollar a piece. Are you kidding me? And this is what it looks like on my stove. What? I know. It's crazy. It's so easy. Okay, so here's our next pot holder project. We have Ziploc with the slide top and I have this Dollar General pot holder. Again, it was a buck. Nice, right? I know. We're going to remove all the tags from it. Then what we're going to do is I'm lining up my Ziplocs. See the top one? I'm going to do this one and I'm going to flip the other one over and put it on the other side. So top one, we're going to make sure we secure it. We want to make sure that it's going to stay still. Now, as I do projects, listen, friends, I do these on the fly. So I learn things as I do them. And so you get to see the mess ups. So this is a little bit of a mess up, but it's okay because we recover. So all right, I secure my Ziploc to my pot holder. Now I'm going to put the other Ziploc and I'm going to put the zip top on the end and we're going to secure this one as well. I'm only tw doing two bags on this one, but you could do as many as you wanted. I just, listen, I wasn't convinced it was going to work, but so there we go. So I secure it and then we're going to, um, I'm just going to sew 
down the center. There it is. And take the clips off. And so when I did this, I was like, shoot, the Ziplocs are hanging over a little too far. So I tried to remedy it. First, though, we're going to just cut out the end of the bag that is overhanging because there's nothing, you know, it's not an opening or anything. I suppose you can leave them, but I decided to just cut off that excess bag part um, from the center. So we did that one for one, and then I found the other one, and I trimmed that one out as well. It's easy enough to do. And could I have also taken some non-acetone nail polish remover and remove that um, the labeling for the Ziploc? Absolutely. But I, again, I wasn't sure this was going to work. So <laughs> this is like the prototype. It's fine. If you do it, you could do that though. Or you could buy non-branded ones. But see, there we go. And see, I was like, shoot, it kind of is going over the sides. But again, you could leave it just like this. You don't have to do the next part. Um, but I was a little irritated that it was hanging over. So I went over with my scissors and I cut each of the sides down. Now, again, if I were going to do this again, I would probably do all of this cutting before I sewed it to the pot holder. But again, leave, live and learn. Live and learn. It's fine. So anyways, all right. So and I just have to make sure to cut where I sewed. But it, you really can't tell um, where I cut it. It really wasn't that big of a deal. And I did that on both sides. Now to remedy it, because now we have the sides open and the slider will fly right off. It's not going to hold anything. It's just pieces of plastic, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to get some, I had some white um, duct tape. You could use any color duct tape. It doesn't matter. It was just, it needs to be something really heavy duty and it needs to be nice and sticky. So I took a piece that was twice the size of my Ziploc that I wanted to cover and I put it on the edge and then I just folded it. See how I'm going to take it and I'm just going to go on the other side and attach it to itself. We're going to cut the excess off and see how I'm just adhering it to itself. And then I'm just going to cut the excess off because again, the duct tape is now stuck to each other. So it's fine. And again, I didn't, you know, just cut off the excess, however much you need to cut off. There it is. Is it perfect? No. And I bet somebody brilliant watching this is going to be like, oh, but you could do this. And that is the point of my videos. Inspiration. I'm your idea girl. Maybe not your execution girl. <laughs> but I have ideas. And I have a little bit of execution skill. <laughs> but anyways. So, and I did the same thing on each of the sides. I made sure to do that on each side. And then again, cut off the excess. Um, you could use really cool looking duct tape. Dollar Tree has some really pretty stuff that also could work. But anyways... There's that. And you see here, I'm just cutting off the excess. Again, you want to do that on each of the sides if you choose to do this. Ta-da! And there it is again. And this is a different variation because I was like, is there a better way to do it? So with this one, I folded it over itself. I don't think it matters. It did not make much of a difference um, which way I did it. It all kind of looked the same. So it was fine. I mean, I suppose you could even go over the entirety of the Ziploc with the duct tape. And that would look really cool too. But I didn't have the energy to do that. <laughs> but you'll see here, look. It works. And that duct tape keeps the slider from falling off. So bingo, bingo, right? So then after that, I'm going to take some heavy duty thread and I'm going to um, sew a button on. And I'm just going to show you because you know what? I needed somebody to show me and maybe this will help you. This is how I knot my thread. So I put my thread in between my fingers, wrap it around my finger and then roll my fingers. And then see, I'm going to take my nail and I'm going to pull it down. And that's how we get a thread, a knot at the end of our thread. My Grammy taught me that. And so now I'll teach you. You're welcome. Some of you are watching and you're like, duh. You know what? Not everybody knows. <laughs> Not everybody knows. So there you go. And now I'm just going to sew on the button. You can go and put, listen, I don't know about you, but I never know how many. I get like overboard with doing the button. Like how many times do you go through? How many times is enough? You go, I guess, until you feel the button tell you to stop, I guess. I don't know. I probably went five times through the holes to make sure that it was secure. Again, probably more than it was needed. But I just keep going through the fabric, then up through the buttonholes, then back down through. 
Easy peasy. And the nice thing about this is the button is so big and I'm only going through the top fabric. I'm not going all the way through. So you're not gonna even see it on the inside. Does that make sense? So don't get crazy about it. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be fine. Then I make a loop and I pull my um, needle through it. And then I do that a few times to knot it. Then I knot it at the very end and um, cut off the excess thread. And then that is it for the button. Buttons, they vex me a little bit, but I keep being told they're not that big of a deal. And it really is not that big of a deal. Like, again, this button is big enough. It'll hold any kind of uh, mistakes you make. So no worries, right? There it is. Look at how cute. Now we're going to close her up. I think it's adorable. I am super jazzed about this. And the reason why I made it was because I wanted a little um, desk um, sewing kit, but this would be good. You could put Band-Aids in it. You can make it a travel thing. You could put little kids' toys, like little Legos. But again, I wanted something for my sewing stuff, so I threw some of my clips in it. And then I went and put some thread in and some needles. And, you know, again, it's like a little mini sewing kit. This also could make a really good gift, right? Like a little mini sewing kit for sewing. Somebody? I mean, come on. Adorable, right? I love it. I love it so much. Um, is it the prettiest? Again, I could have made it a little bit better, but again, it's a good idea, I think. I think it's a good idea. And I think somebody out there is going to do it even better than me. And I'm excited. But look at how cute, right? I know. Yee! I love it. Okay, so here's the next one. This one I have um, two pot holders from Dollar Tree. They compact two. Okay, so I only bought one. So this is $1.25 per um, package. So we're going to remove the tags from it. And you want to make sure you remove the tag that's sewn in. I just tear that out. Easy peasy. Now, again, remember this project, we're going to... I can't wait for you to see it. I'm so excited. This is a problem that I had for a while. So I'm using this big old thing of duct tape um, just because it was easy. It's about six inches of across. Wow, words are hard today. I apologize. So anyways, here it is. And all I'm going to do is trace it. You could use a plate, a cup, or you could just measure a six inch circle. Um, this was just, you know me, I'm, I'm a lazy crafter. I don't want to make any more um, effort on this than I had to. <laughs> so I just traced it and I'm tracing it with my gel ink pen because if you hit it with a little bit of heat, the ink will disappear. So there's that. So once we have that, we are going to cut out our circle. And I love the pattern on this. It's nice and fall. Um, you could add, and you see on the my table, I did have another fall fabric. You can add another fabric on this if you don't like the pattern that is on the pot holder. But I just wanted to make this easy. So we're going to use just what we have with the pot holder. So again, we're going to cut out this circle and you want to use a bit, a pair of scissors that are a little bit heavy duty because you're going through batting and two layers of fabric and then the edges and all of that jazz. So, you know, word to the wise, a little bit of a heavy duty, sharp pair of scissors. So there we go. That's that. Perfect. Then we're going to see how that top fabric is going to come apart, right? So I'm going to fold it in half and then we're going to cut it in half. Does that make sense? So we're going to fold it in half. So that way we have two half circles. Because this project is going to give you two little pot lid holders. If that makes, you'll see. You'll see. It'll make sense in a minute. So there's that. We have our half circles. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is separate them. And then we're going to take the fabric one and we're going to take that fabric off and we're going to flip it over so it is pretty side to batting does that make sense okay and then you're going to put it all together we're going to clip it and then we're going to sew the circle part okay leave the flat part unsewn and here it is we want to make sure we cut off our excess thread these are easy peasy sewing projects friends this is just a like straight stitch you just go around that half circle it's fine so all right so once you get all of your threads and i always miss one inevitably <laughs> but anyway so what we're going to do is make sure you get your um on a you know like unpin it then we're going to pull it apart like this and then we're going to go seam to seam and we're going to attach, make sure that you, whatever you're using, whether it's a clip or a needle or whatever you want to, or a pin, you just want to make sure you attach this because we're then going to sew across, leaving 
an opening. Now you want to leave an, enough of an opening so that you can turn it out right. Okay. And again, we're going to do the same thing with the other one, seam to seam. We're going to put those together. And again, you probably want to use a heavy duty, <laughs> heavy duty words, heavy duty needle with this so that you don't break it or whatever, because you're going through a lot of batting and it might need a little bit of help. So again, we're going to put those together and then we're going to sew it, leaving an opening to turn. Okay. I leave a pretty big opening because I have some extra awesome hands. So anyways, there it is. We sewed it. Now we're going to cut off our excess thread and we're going to turn it outright. I always start with the corner, that point and push it through. It makes it a little easier to get through. Also make sure when you're sewing it to make sure you reinforce the edges. So that means do a couple back stitches um, just to make sure that you have a nice secure stitch. Then once that's turned out, all I'm gonna do is curl in that opening that we had. See what I have here? Perfect, then we're going to take our clip or pin and secure it and then we're gonna sew it so that it's closed. And friends, I can't wait for you to see what this, because this was, this was my, this was my kitchen. I do not want to use a big old pot holder to take the lids off of our pan. <laughs> and I didn't want to use a big old, sometimes you have some little handles that you, you know, I don't want to use a huge pot holder. It's too bulky. And I just needed a little bit. That's what these are for. I can't wait for you to see. But again, we're doing the same thing with the other one. We're just turning it out right. It's a little bit of effort, depending on how big that opening that you left was. I like leaving a bigger opening just because it's so much easier to turn it out. And it's actually, for me, easier to sew it after. But that's just me. So there's that. And again, you're just going to make sure that you get that fabric part and you're going to sew it, curl in the edges and then you're gonna sew that shut. So same song, second verse. I love this, because one pot holder means you get two of these. I love, love, love. So if you buy the package for $1.25, you can get four of these. Would these not make a great gift? Oh, <gasps> if you gave your, whoever you're giving the gift to, you gave them a pot and these, maybe a little package of soup or something. That would be super fun, wouldn't it? Oh, I love it. All right, so anyways, sew it. Here it is, we sewed it. You wanna make sure, again, you clip your excess threads off. Easy peasy. And then you're just going to tuck. So then all we're gonna do is take that fabric that we did and we're just gonna turn it inside the red part of it. Does that, that words are hard on that. It's a little challenging to describe, but see how we're gonna just pull it on the inside. Look at how cute. Oh! It's adorable, especially. You could try it the other way. It doesn't work the other way, though. Not as good. But there it is. You ready? I can't wait for you to see it. You're not ready for I don't think you're ready for this. I don't know. Maybe you are. Maybe you've seen these. I've never seen these before. I was so tickled about it. It's not even funny. There they are. Super cute. You ready? Look at this. Here's my pot. Here's my lid. What? Ta-da! It's got a lid holder. It's so fun. And then we got our little handles. Ta-da! How fun. And it's not so bulky. It doesn't take up all the room in your drawer or whatever. But look it! Okay, here's such an easy project. Y'all have probably seen this countless times. We're going to take this Dollar Tree pot holder. We're going to clip off all of our um, tags. And it's two. You get two pot holders for $1.25. We're only going to use one for this. So we're going to take it. We're going to fold it the long way. And I did pull off the tags on the inside as well. Just tore them off. Probably not the best way, but it's fine. Oh, and I also have a decal from Michael's, but Dollar Tree also has those iron-on decals. So see how I'm folding it the long way with the loop in the center? Perfect. Then I'm going to take my clips. And we're just going to secure it so that they doesn't, because it's a pot holder, so it's bulky and it does want to kind of open back up. So, all right. So we're just going to secure our edges and then we're going to sew it. Now you're going to sew it not all the way around. You want to leave an opening. Okay. So I always sew it. So right by that curve before the curve is where I start sewing and look at how fun it could, you could just leave it here, put your glasses in it and you're done. I wanted something for my sunglasses, but I couldn't find them, so I had to use my eyeglasses. But look at how cute it is, right? But we can't stop there. We're going to take our cute little good vibes. Now, 
it's iron on, but it's also sticky. So if you didn't want to iron it on, you wouldn't have to. But I stuck it on there and then I put some parchment paper on top and then I took my wee little iron, which I got at Walmart. Yes, I know somebody's going to ask. And I iron it on according to the directions. And then look at how cute. And then it's on there forever, I guess. <laughs> but look at cute, right? Good vibes. Stop it. That's adorable and so easy. Let me just tell you, friends, this is so kiss simple. It's just like our eyeglass case. We're going to do the exact same thing. Fold it in half the long way so that the loop is in the, on the center. And then we're going to adhere. Well, not adhere. You know what I'm saying. Use our clips and so that they're not moving all over the place. And then we're just going to sew it just like we did for our eyeglass case. Except this time, we're not going to use it for eyeglasses. I don't know about you, but my husband loves his cast iron. And let me also say, they are awful for pot holders, right? Well, guess what? We're going to use this. This is going to be a pot holder. It's a handle holder. Look at how fun. Easy peasy. So easy. Oh, my gosh. I love it. And this also right now this is the last one and oh my gosh it's so much fun i got these pot holders at dollar tree they're little gnomes and i'm there for it i also picked up this little um crossbody bag from dollar tree we're not going to use the bag part we're going to use just the straps so here's the bag there it is but i just wanted that webbing and all of the you know you can make it bigger or smaller. One thing I would say doing this, um, first of all, when you go to clip this one off, you want to make sure you clip it because those are two pieces and it'll it'll fall off. You don't want that. And I cut it off the other side. Now, you want to add a little heat to it with like a lighter or something because those ends want to fray. So then what I did was I added our strap Right where, see where that gnome's nose is, that whole line? I added it where that little, like, um, opening is at the at the beginning of that opening. Does that make sense? And then we're going to put the other side on the other side, and we're going to make sure to attach our clip or pin to that, and then we're going to sew it. Now, I sewed it. I went back and forth, and I did two lines back and forth, okay? So that's what it was. That's what it's going to look like. So cute. So back and forth, back and forth, right? There it is. We did it. Perfect. Then we're going to add our top. Um, well, first, the other thing I did was I cut off that loop and I just sewed down that the excess part of the loop. I don't know. That's probably not even necessary. But then we're going to add our second pot holder to our first one. And I'm going to make sure to attach our um, clips to it or pins. And you're going to sew, just sew all the way around making sure that you are mindful of those straps because, you know, again, it's very bulky. I actually had to put on a heavy-duty needle for doing this only because it's just, again, it's bulky. But see, I'm just attaching the clips and then we're going to go all the way around. And again, I just sewed like right on the other side of that orange part. Look, see, it wasn't even wasn't even perfect. It's fine. Look at what? Look at how cute it is. Already adorable, right? It's got little pockets. Quit it. I love it so much. And you can adjust it so you can have it as a handbag or you can put it over your shoulder. Love. Yes, my daughter stole it. It's fine. I made it kind of for her anyway. But then I decided, you know what? Let's add a button to it. So I had my Dollar Tree buttons. I picked out one that I thought matched. Oh, let's go into our little sewing kit that we made. So fun. See, I told you it was going to come in handy. Super fun. Um, so I'm just going to get out some needle and thread, and we're going to sew the button on. Again, don't get crazy about making the button perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be on there securely, right? So all I'm doing is, and I'm, again, I'm going through just the top layers, and I'm not going all the way through. So you're not seeing any of this thread work on the inside of your bag. Does that make sense? All right, so there it is. We're going to sew the button on. And I'll be honest with you, I said it before. I'll say it again. I never know how many times I should come through. So I wound up being excessive. <laughs> Those buttons are the most secure buttons on the planet. <laughs> and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But so much fun. I 
can't even with this bag. I was so like giggling making it. Is it perfect? No, I'm sure somebody, I'm sure there's some seamstresses out there and some serious sewers that are like, what did you do? This is awful. It might be, but you know what? When we craft, can we just be happy? Like, let's just enjoy the process. Let's not get too fussy. I know there is a process and I know that there's a technical way to do everything, but sometimes friends, done is better than perfect, right? Because I don't know about you, but I would never get anything done if I had to research and make sure I did everything exactly the way you're supposed to, right? So I choose to be imperfect and have a done project. <laughs> I'm not selling them. I'm just having fun with them. So it's fine. But here we are again with my excessive button <laughs> sewing never ends, keeps going. And that's fine. But you can see I didn't cut any like you'll see it does not take very long, even with my excessive button sewing to get her done. Like, yeah, easy peasy. And I did you saw me begin with white. I did not. I chose to do black instead just because it matched the button um, but then all I do is take and I make a loop and then I wrap that around the button and then go through that loop with my needle and then I made a knot at the end to secure it and then cut off the excess like that's in the oh I did wrap it around a couple times because I thought I remembered my gram telling me you had to wrap the thread around the button I don't know why I did it though, just in case. And I did another knot over it, but look at how cute this is. Are you kidding me? This is adorable. It makes me smile. And I hope it makes you smile too. Anyways, friends, thank you so much for watching. And I hope this inspires you.